I'm Vinny Politan. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. And we begin this hour with the latest legal maneuvers by Britney Spears. The pop star wants to take back control of her life and her career. Spears' attorneys were in a Los Angeles courtroom yesterday asking a judge to remove her father, Jamie Spears, as the conservador who's been making decisions for her for the past 12 years. The conservatorship started back in 2008 when Britney went through a very public meltdown. We all remember some of her bizarre behavior, like when she shaved her head. We remember those custody battles over her two sons and the allegations of substance abuse. Well, these days, Britney has been out of the limelight. She took a break from performing last year, but she has been talking to her fans on Instagram. Let's take a look. So I know that there have been a lot of comments and a lot of people saying a lot of different things about me, but I just want to let you guys know that I am fine. I'm the happiest I've ever been in my life, and I'm sending all of you guys a lot of prayers, wishes, and um, a lot of love. Okay, so yesterday I felt like it was the beginning of fall. I pulled out all of my jackets, and then the next day it was really hot. It was very confusing. Anyhow, this summer has been so much fun for me. I learned so much, I laughed so much, I swam so much. But the most important thing that I did learn was that life has so many spontaneous gifts at each moment. So this is the exact same bathing suit I wore like three days ago to the beach. But I said, hey, why not give it another shot? But while I'm at it, I just wanted to let you guys know the five most important things that you need to bring when you go to the beach. A towel, oil, sunscreen, a dog, and a hat. I'm going to go to my jacuzzi now. Your heart sweats, your body shakes. Okay, I, I, I don't know what to say about her Instagram. I mean, I, I do follow her, and I've been noticing these things, and I don't, I don't want to judge her, but let's bring in Ashley Banfield. Um, Ashley, I don't want to judge anyone. You know, sometimes people want to be goofy on Instagram and be fun and be real. Um, I don't know. What, 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 do you, what do you think? Well, listen, if you look at my Instagram, you can be very judgmental. I do baby talk on TikTok. <laughs> but lots of celebrities do funny, weird things on, on uh, Instagram. It's just that not a lot of those same celebrities have gone through such a tumultuous 12 years, 12 years uh, that she's been under that conservatorship. It was due to expire October 20, or uh, August, rather, Oct uh, not October, August 22nd. And so this hearing... Um, Vinny was very contentious. I mean, toxic, I guess you could say, pardon the pun. But um, this was something that I think, you know, at this point, a lot of people shake their heads and wonder, was she still really under that, that conservatorship at 38 years old? Yes, indeed, she is. So I had a chance to talk to it with um, Andrew Dalton, who is the um, Associated Press Entertainment reporter who was in the courtroom for the hearing. And since it's COVID, it's not easy to get into a courtroom, but he wasn't the only one who was there. You might be surprised to find out who else was. Here is our conversation. So, Andrew, this is a pretty rare look that we were allowed to have um, in the courtroom. These proceedings up until now have been pretty quiet. Yeah, they have. You know, most of them have been sealed off to the media and to the public. Um, you know, the judge, uh, for needs of Britney's privacy, has made sure that they've all been shut down. And this was a rare case where uh, the court courtroom was left open. Uh, you know, Britney has been pushing herself for more transparency. She has been, you know, uh, objecting to some of the uh, sealing motions that her father and the other conservators have been making. So this was a rare case where, uh, you know, the media and the public actually got to have uh, eyes and ears in the courtroom. Well, let's talk about that, because I have to be honest, I, um, I somewhat expected that the judge would grant Brittany the, um, the relief that she was requesting, but that didn't happen. It didn't happen. And uh, it, it was it, it almost felt like, you know, there was a lot of uh, a lot of, uh, you know, drama that came up just during the call. Uh, you know, uh, Brittany's attorney, Samuel Lingham, saying you know, she, she fears her father, saying that she's not going to resume her career until until uh, you know he's uh, removed from control. I think there was a lot of information and a lot of sort of you know dramatic stuff that happened just right at that last moment. And I think that uh, the judge Brenda Penny just uh, didn't want to do anything too drastic in the moment. I think that she maybe wanted to um, 
you know, before doing something that would really fundamentally change this entire arrangement, she wanted to give it a little more time. Honestly, just from a litigant standpoint, it just sounds like they played their cards wrong by making these sort of uh, volatile threats. Ultimately, if they hadn't gone that far, suggesting she'll never perform again until she's released from the, you know, throes of, of her father's uh, conservatorship, maybe they would have gotten further. It was interesting because, you know, in the filings, they were very strong, but they were also very formal. You know, there wasn't a lot of talk about Brittany's wishes, about her feelings. And this, this came up, you know, pretty far into the hearing. Uh, you know, you've got to think that uh, Brittany and her attorney, Samuel Lingham, you know, they planned on, on, on probably revealing this, but, but it did kind of feel like it came up out of nowhere. And, uh, you know, it was, uh, you know, in the course of things, it did feel, you know, they, they, had, they had this specific... Uh, Set of issues laid out where you know they, they had objected to his uh, the way he had uh, been handling her business without informing her you know firing and bringing on a new business manager um, not working with the corporate fiduciary that she had wanted brought brought in in the way that they wanted so you know yeah it was a very formal uh, set of arguments that, that have been laid that were laid out and then it was this kind of bombshell and you know it was it was you know everyone in the courtroom looking at each other and you could you know the judge showed no sign of, of reacting to it but it did feel like it was. Uh, the introduction of emotion where it might not have been. Yeah, so what I was sort of uh, perplexed about was this notion that she, you know, through her lawyer, because she didn't attend this uh, hearing, that she said she fears Jamie Spears, her father. And yet there's also competing evidence that they haven't spoken in a very, very long time. So where does that sort of uh, settle out? It seems to go hand in hand. I mean, uh, you know, the lawyer for, for uh, Britney's father, Jamie Spears, uh, did say that uh, the reason they hadn't spoken was because her lawyer was forbidding it. So uh, clearly that, that lack of communication is a result of whatever fear it was she was feeling. Uh, they didn't uh, get too deeply into it. Um, you know, um, Vivian Thorine, uh, Jamie Spears' lawyer, didn't really press. I mean, she certainly objected to these, you know, these emotions and, and these strong statements being entered by a hearsay into the record, but she, uh, she didn't press on what the issues were. I think she probably didn't think it was, was you know, going to be helpful for her. Uh, it's, but, it's, um, one thing, you know, it's one thing to, to, to say what's wrong with your conservator, but it's a whole other thing to say what's right with you. And given the fact that she's been under the care of her father for 12 years, which is much longer than most conservatorships that, that I've witnessed and most court watchers have witnessed, um, where was the evidence that they put forward to say, I'm fine now. You know, there was very little of that. Um, and, you know, he did, uh, her lawyer did call her a high functioning conservative, which is something that's just objectively true. You know, conservatorships often apply to people who are very severely disabled or who are in a coma in some cases. And, you know, or they're very temporary if it, if it is along the lines of men mental health, which was the reason for this one. Um, they haven't done a whole lot. I mean, a lot of this may be happening in sealed filings and sealed hearings where they talk about her competency and, and her abilities. That, that's the kind of thing that um, generally would be kept from the public. So it is almost certain that that has been discussed, but it hasn't, they, you know, they haven't openly presented a whole lot of, um, a lot of evidence uh, of her competency. And it, it's, um, you know, part of it could be uh, they're waiting until they ask for the entire thing to be ended, which is, you know, something that we have expected to happen for a while. Um, they've emphasized that they don't want the conservatorship to end and that she just wants a voice. I remember covering Richard Simmons and wondering if he was okay because there'd been zero image or sound from him in a very long time. That is not the case with Brittany. She's got an Instagram account. I follow it. And um, it's unusual. To, to say the least, it's an unusual account. Not to say that lots of stars don't have very weird stuff on their Instagram. Did that come into play at all or has her social media been a part of this at all? Hasn't come up again in the in the in the public court documents. I mean, it is something that sort of you know every every Instagram post and video she does uh, is you know meticulously looked over and speculated on by fans and media alike. And and um, it is it is odd at times. It it, it hasn't really um, come up in any kind of a, a direct way. I mean, in some of the, you know there was at one point she. Um, uh, the conservatorship sought a, sought a restraining order against her former manager, Sam Woodfee, and, and that had to, some of his interactions with her on social media were, were a part of that. Um, it's definitely something that, uh, you know, the judge and the lawyers are looking at, but it hasn't really, at least in, in any open way, come into play uh, as far as the judgments they make about her. And, and you're right, though, that a lot, of, a lot of celebrities certainly have all kinds of oddities, and, it, you know, 
at, at, at the, you know, in the end here, this is about whether, um, you know, she is an adult who can, you know, sort of make at least, you know, basic decisions for herself, even if they, you know, uh, even if they happen to be eccentric or, or, you know, whatever direction she takes them. You know, the, the question arises with the social media, et cetera, and this like really burgeoning movement called Free Britney that has, by the way, some tractions from, you know, some traction from stars like Rose McGowan and I think Paris Hilton and, you know, a couple of other people who've given some prominence to this Free Britney movement. Uh, they were even in court, like some of those fans, not just outside the courthouse, which is normal for them now, but also inside the courtroom. That has not sat well uh, with Jamie Spears. No, he definitely thinks of the Free Britney movement as, you know, uh, uh, you know, at best a conspiracy, you know, theory movement, and at worst, you know, people actively seeking to meddle in her life and do harm. Uh, and, you know, they, they, were, they were in the courtroom just as members of the public. It, you, you wouldn't necessarily know it. I mean, there's always, you know, a, a sort of a ragtag bunch of people trying to get into these hearings, but there were several people in the courtroom wearing uh, Free Britney masks which uh, has to have been, you know, an odd presence for, for anyone who could see them. Of course, many, you know, Jamie Spears and, and others weren't, weren't in the courtroom. They were taken apart by phone. But uh, yeah, their, their presence, they were there. And, you know, they have been sort of emboldened by not only a lot of more, um, you know, sort of going mainstream as far as other celebra celebrities agreeing with them, but, you know, Brittany herself uh, in a series of recent filings actually kind of, you know, at least in general, gave them her endorsement. She, she said, you know, maybe this kind of, the kind of scrutiny that they bring on my situation uh, is merited. Um, and she didn't, you know, she didn't say she wanted to be freed necessarily, but she did say she reserves the right to be. And she said, had nothing but positive things to say about them uh, in, in a set of recent filings, which were her objections to ceilings, her, her you know, attempts to keep things public. I got to be honest, the, the, the saga that has been Britney Spears' um, public life has been, I believe, just so tragic. As a mother, I, I look at, you know, what's um, transpired with her since age 17, and I find it just so sad. The, the unbearable spotlight that was on this superstar at such a young age. Uh, it, and, you know, it seems to have just put a nuclear bomb into her family as well. Her mother supports Britney and has spoken out against dad, as I understand it. What about her siblings? Where, where do they fall into all of this now? It's hard to know exactly. You know, her, her, um, her sister, Jamie Lynn, ha has, uh, she has assigned her uh, something of a role in her finances, uh, you know, made her a trustee in, in, in charge of one part of the money. And there has been a sense that, that, uh, that Jamie Lynn, uh, you know, will have maybe a greater role in the future. In fact, maybe when the conservatorship is over, she could, you know, act as a, as a, some kind of an overseer or business manager. I mean, that's, that's her, that's been her, her uh, main role. And uh, yeah, Lynn Spears, her mother did uh, weigh in by her own attorney at the hearing yesterday. You know, she's been just sort of a neutral observer and, and she, you know, she was very careful, uh, clearly not to speak out directly against her husband, but she did, you know, express her sadness. She said she was heartbroken uh, about, um, Heartbroken about where Britney and her father's relationship has gone. She, she called it toxic, which if you're a Britney music listener, was a, there was a moment of a lot of raised eyebrows there. It's almost as though she said, oops, I did it again, you know, in the middle of, right. the, of the court hearing. And so she definitely weighed in on the side of, of, uh, of Britney uh, steering clear of her father. Uh, I, and, uh, yeah. I really hope they can uh, figure this out because, you know, I feel for that. I feel for each party in, in this sort of messy, messy affair. Andrew, thank you so much for your insight and your reporting. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Ashley. Thanks for having me. No matter how you slice it, uh, Britney Spears at 38 years old looks fantastic. She's also on her Instagram boxing and working out and clearly doing a lot of dancing and she is fit as a fiddle. So uh, her physical health, uh, at least I think it appears from her Instagram, uh, she seems to be keeping up with pretty intensively. She is um, currently under a temporary conservator named Jody Montgomery. She wants that one to, to stay. Uh, dad out, Jody in. But the judge has decided um, that in the future, uh, petitions might be considered a suspension or even a complete removal. It, but where we stand right now with it, um, Vinny, is that there's this threat made by Brittany through her lawyer that she will never perform again unless she gets this severance from uh, the grips of her dad. And she hasn't really been doing any performing since 2019. So um, if you're a Brittany fan, it's got to be a really hard time.
Unless if you're following her on Instagram, because there's, I mean, she does, she does the dancing and the performing there. But not uh, the singing, and, you know, she doesn't sing and exactly. dance. She, she dances in lip syncs. And again, I lip sync on my Insta. Trust me, it's crazy, the stuff that I do. But um, I don't have that history. Right. So I'm hoping that my fans will give me a bit of a pass on that. There won't be a segment done about me. Right. And, and the <laughs> bottom line is her father has actually done, uh, her financial health is, is great, right? I mean, he's done an... Yeah. A great job in terms of the finances. It's it's, it's kind of that personal relationship and, and control right. that becomes the problem. He actually brought that up in uh, his case. His lawyer brought it up in, in the case saying, I took her from debt uh, to 60 million, you know, in, uh, in, in net worth. So he says, look, I can't be this evil, you know, Svengali that perhaps her lawyer is making me out to be. There's a lot behind the scenes we don't know, obviously, right. but I think you got to be really careful if you're just consuming free Britney accounts and what they say, because they don't know either. They're not living in that family. Um, and if they profess to do, I say, show me the evidence, just like in this election uh, account, everyone's saying, show the evidence. Ashley Bedfield, thank you so much. It's good to see you.